In this chapter, we're going to talk about acids and bases. The earliest definition of acid was by Arrhenius, and Arrhenius said that an acid was anything that would uh, donate a hydrogen ion, and a base was anything that donates or forms a hydroxide ion. So your um, H plus defines an acid, and your OH minus hydroxide defines base. So uh, that's why when we write acids, we typically write the H in front of the formula because that's what's going to be donated in the form of the H plus. And then the other ion is going to be whatever um, that nonmetal is, or uh, the other ion, I should say. Um, a base is going to have the hydroxide. And so that'll be the end part of the formula because it's the negative, and then it'll also have a positive ion that was attached to that. So acids have the H's in front, and they produce the hydrogens. A base has a hydroxide at the end, and it produces hydroxides when you put it in water. And these are all in water, okay? So the Arrhenius definition predicts a lot of the acids and bases, but it's limited because it, it's not always um, a perfect um, definition. So H plus really doesn't exist in water. Instead, it reacts with water and it forms something called a hydronium ion, which is an H3O plus. So an H plus immediately attaches to the water and forms this hydronium ion. And so that's actually what's present. Now you'll see people write this um, instead of this, and it just, I mean, it, they're, they've become synonymous with each other, and so you'll see it both ways. Um, but technically the hydronium ion is, is how that is existing um, in that solution. So the, another definition came into play called the Bronsted-Lowry definition. And so that's the one that's more widely used today. Bronsted-Lowry is very similar for an acid. It donates a proton or a hydrogen ion. If you recall, um, a hydrogen ion has, um, it's like this. So it has one proton and one electron, but no neutrons. So if you remove your electron, then you're left with only a proton. And so that's why, again, hydrogen ions and protons are synonymous. So Bronsted-Lowry says that an acid is a proton donor or an H plus donor. And a Bronsted-Lowry, here's where it's very different, is a proton acceptor. And so in the acid and water reaction, water accepts a proton and the acid is going to donate the proton. And so this H goes to the water molecule, forming the H3O plus, the hydronium ion. And then you're left with your chloride ion as well. So in this reaction, hydrochloric acid is a Bronsted-Lowry acid because it's donating a proton. And water is a Bronsted-Lowry base because it accepts the proton. So make sure you know the difference between the Bronsted-Lowry and Arrhenius and how they're defining things. Remember, basically, they're the same for acids, but in a Bronsted-Lowry, you accept a proton to be a base. In Arrhenius, you, have, you produce hydroxides. So a Bronsted-Lowry acid must contain a hydrogen ion atom. And so we write a general formula as HA, and we write that H at the beginning of the formulas. So when you see something that starts with an H, then you know that that is um, an acid. An organic acid, like acetic acid, sometimes that H is written at the end. So if you see CH3COOH, that's the organic acid. These were inorganic acids, the more what we think of. Acetic acid is vinegar, by the way. 
So the names of common acids come from the anions that are formed when they dissolve in water. So the anion are the negatively charged. So anions whose names end in IDE, you add the prefix hydro and change that IDE to ic. Okay? So if, if it was named chloride, it becomes hydrochloric acid. Polyatomic anions that end in eight also become ic. Okay? But you don't put hydro in front of it. So a sulfate would become sulfuric acid. If, they, if the polyatomic is an ite, then it's going to end in us. And so sulfite would become sulfurous acid. Okay, so 8 equals ick and it equals us. Now, we also can classify Bronsted-Lowry acids by how many hydrogens or how many protons they can produce. And so mono, of course, is a, is a one proton or one acidic proton. Diproduct has two, and triproduct or polyproduct has three or more. All right. Um, a Bronsted-Lowry acid could be neutral, or sometimes it can carry a charge. So what I mean is, like, hydrochloric acid is neutral. Um, the hydronium ion, which can act as an acid or a base, right? I mean, no, no. Water can be an acid or a base. So when it produces acid, it's H3O plus. And then HSO4 minus can also be an acid. And what this is from, if you look at this, it was H2SO4 is sulfuric acid. And it can donate one hydrogen. And it becomes... HSO4 minus, and then it could donate another hydrogen and become SO4 2 minus. So the the big thing about diproducts and triproducts is they could give up one or both in the case of diproduct product or one, two, or three in the case of phosphoric acid. So a Bronsted-Lowry base is a proton acceptor, as we said. So it's got to be able to form a bond with that hydrogen. And so it, in order to do that, it has to contain a lone pair of electrons. And so in the case of ammonia, NH3, it has a lone pair of electrons. And so when you add it to water, it accepts that, that hydrogen there in the place of those electrons. And since you have replaced um, one of those electrons with a bond, you now don't have as many um, electrons compared to protons, and so that's what gives it that plus charge. So you end up having NH4 plus your ammonium ion plus OH minus. So that's why this is a Bronsted-Lowry acid, I mean, sorry, Bronsted-Lowry base, because it's going to accept one of these hydrogens, okay, and then it's going to form there. Lone pairs make um, these neutral compounds, okay? So ammonia, which has a lone pair, water, if you recall, has two lone pairs, all right? And so the hydroxide is going the hydroxide is going to be the base in each metal. So if you have um, sodium metal, you're going to have sodium hydroxide. If you have potassium, you're going to have potassium hydroxide. So these with the hydroxides, you're going to see most of those are going to be um, strong bases, whereas ammonia is a weak base because and and it because it doesn't have the OH